Hello everybody, I'm Lady Nadra and welcome to my channel. I mean, we talk about lifestyle, family, church, beauty, fashion, all kinds of stuff we talk about here. So um, this video happens to be one about family and this dreadful, awful disease that ha has been ravaging so many of um, our loved ones' lives as well as ours, dementia. Dementia, Alzheimer's, however you categorize it, it's, I mean, it's just terrible. And you have Alzheimer, Alzheimer's, which is the most popular, vascular dementia, um, Lewy body, Lewy body, sorry, Lewy body, frontal temporal. And so Alzheimer's, um, the range of people that uh, it affects is 50 to 75%. Vascular would be 20 to 30%. Lewy body would be 10 to 25%. And 10 to 15% is frontal temporal. Whatever the cause is, it's terrible. <laughs> Uh, it kind of robs you of your loved one. They're here, but kind of not here. They're, but they're somewhere in the balance. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're in there. The best way I can explain it is think of how a computer holds so much information, so much valuable information. Um, like my mom, she's very smart. Just, I mean, she was, she's the our person, everybody's person in the family. And so a computer holds all this valuable information, yet at this point, it's like everything is loading. We turn the computer on, she's there right in front of us, but we're just waiting for everything to kind of catch up or and it's not catching up. It's just still, that little dial is just still spinning or the screen is just kind of like pixelating. That's the best way that I can understand, that I can uh, describe to you what's going on when, as it pertains to my mom and probably most people with, with Alzheimer's or the, any type of dementia. Our journey started, I want to say probably to where we noticed it, we started noticing it. I don't know whether she was experiencing anything before or not, but I noticed my mom every year she would renew my grandmother's medical information and it was the same paperwork every year but for some reason she started having trouble with you know processing that paperwork which is very interesting to me because it was like I said it was the same thing every year so when she expressed that it it was a little bit difficult for her that concerned me I helped her out but you know we just moved past it then my grandmother got very, very, very sick. And by the way, my grandmother also had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's at a point. And then they actually admitted her into the Alzheimer um, portion of the facility that she was living in. And I think she was just there maybe about a week, five days or so. And they ended up taking her and putting her on the main floor. The reason they did that is because they gave her a medication called Aricept and it began to help her right away, like cleared her right up. Her confusion, whatever she was experiencing was cleared up almost instantaneously. My grandmother was in that facility for like 15 years and on Aricept, she was pretty clear. I mean, she knew who we all were um, up until maybe the last three or four days before. Yes, so how are you doing? You I'm good. Oh, so my boy. I'm my home style. Who, Jalen? Who, Mark? Yeah. Who are you? He's fine. Can he came to see you yesterday. He did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's really yeah. 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 No, you were in the in your in your room. You were awake. He prayed with you. Uh -huh. He just forgot. You 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 just forgot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I tell him to come back, and maybe you remember. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> okay. My mother couldn't, after having the conversation with the doctor, that my grandmother wasn't gonna make it um, too much longer and that they were gonna start her on the comfort care. And um, my mom couldn't really wrap her mind around the fact that this was taking place. She gave the okay, my mother's the only child, so she gave the okay. We had the conversation. She was, you know, understanding, okay, my dad's not gonna be here anymore at that time but it didn't seem to stay with her. And they told us they weren't gonna give her anything else to eat or drink and all that comes with comfort care. And I noticed that as the stress began to set in, um, she just, she wasn't grasping the fact that, you know, they weren't gonna feed her, her or give her anything to drink. And she kept trying to give her something to drink. <laughs> Um, we had to call her pastor, who's my husband. We had to call him to kind of get him to explain to her. And she said she understood, but she really didn't understand. So then when my grandmother passed away, you know, it just, everything kind of just intensified like five times, you know, and she began to repeat herself, ask questions um, her number was three times. Like she, she'd ask you, do you want something to eat? And do something else. You want something to eat? Do something else. And then she said, you want something to eat? But it, it would be three times. Every time it was three. That was her number. Um, before she kind of stopped or maybe heard you or whatever. But um, those are the kind of the first things that we noticed. And then after my grandmother passed and we had the funeral and all that, um, the strangest thing was my mom, I lived not too far from where the nursing home was and my mother ended up, she was coming to my house and she ended up going to the nursing home, getting out of her car, walking into the facility only to see my grandmother's nurse and that, you know, kind of got her together. Well, drove to my house and she told me what happened and it was scary to her. And so... She had mentioned to me that she had gone to see the memory care uh, physician at Kaiser. And I asked her, I said, well, how come you didn't take one of us with you? So we can kind of, because we had been seeing some things, you know, just little things, little nuances of her memory loss um, were kind of peeking out to us. But when she went and they gave her bad news she at that point turned off to everything dementia like she she obviously went on her own so she must have been noticing some things but once we got on board that kind of made her back off off of it listen if you know somebody that's dealing with this kind of stuff you better believe that they are doing everything that they can, everything in their power to combat this situation according, because everybody's different. Everybody's lifestyle is different. Um, you have to approach things different ways with different people because like I said, she's still in there. She just is just still spinning, <laughs> you know? And so you never, you're never going to tell Gloria what to do. You're never going to um, trick her into doing something or, <laughs> you know, I mean, the further she got into the disease, it was easier. It became easier to kind of fool her a little bit. But I don't know. I still think even to this day, and she's well advanced in this Alzheimer's diagnosis. And even now, you're not really going to make her do much, you know? My mom has always been one to manage everybody's everything. I mean, your stuff, my stuff, her stuff, his stuff, <laughs> you know? That's, that's just who she's been. And that being the case, you know, that that thing to manage everybody is very visceral for her. And so... To me, it looks like she's even even managing 
her response to this Alzheimer's in a way. It, that may sound strange, but it I still feel like she's she's controlling or trying to control this situation. If you talk to her about something, well, mom, you remember, you know, so and so, and if she doesn't, then she'll change the subject. <laughs> you know, she's still in there. Um, but just not able to communicate with us what it is that is happening or bothering her or um, with my father passing recently. She's just, I can tell that she knows at times, but then other times she seems like she doesn't know. You know, it's it's weird. The breakout. <laughs> yes, so I would go over there. Um, <clears throat> this particular day I was there and my dad was, he was getting ill, so he would sleep on the couch. I was sitting right next to him on the couch watching TV. And um, my mom, who would do this often because she was always, like I said, trying to get out of the gate. And so we had the lock on there, the uh, padlock on there, and I would always hear her fiddling with that lock, like trying to get the combination to work. So <laughs> something told me to get up and go look. And I had my phone in my hand, and lo and behold, she was breaking out. She was climbing over the fence. She got up there. I don't know whether she pulled a chair over. I don't know how she got on top of the gate, but she got on top of that gate and jumped down and dusted her hands out and took off walking. It happened to be a day where my back was killing me, so I couldn't hop the gate. <laughs> then I was trying to go through the garage, but we unhooked the garage remote. So I'm like, oh my gosh. So I had to get in the car get the actual remote, let the garage up. But by that time, she had taken off and she was walking. I mean, she's strong as an ox, you know what I mean? She's like, she took off walking. And so I just walked behind her. Just, you know, she didn't know I was behind her. I just walked behind her to see where she was going and which direction she would take. Like if she ever took off again, I would know which, you know, maybe which direction she might take. Um, I don't know. It was just, that was... That was a doozy, I tell you. And she told somebody that was caregiving for her, I think it was G, she told her, I'm going to jump this, I'm going to jump this gate. She told her she was going to do it. And did it. Man, we ended up having to move them out of their house and into a place, an apartment that was closer to um, the rest of the family because they lived way out and we needed to be closer to them. And that's when we got to see really what my dad had been dealing with, you know, as far as, far as my mom was concerned. Um, one morning I went over and all of her clothes were at the front door. And so I said, well, what's going on? What, what are you doing? And she said, well, we're going to take this to, to mama's house. That means her grandmother. We're going to take this all this stuff to mama's house. And, um, you know, so I had to distract her because she had packed up everything out of her closet right there at the front door. <laughs> and I had to distract her and get her to walk with me to the trash in order to get her mind off of moving everything out. And when we came back in, I, I started to get her, oh, mom, help me put all this stuff away. So then, you know, we kind of just redirected her focus and she put everything away. But in her mind, she needed to go see her grandmother. So the next day when I went over there, by the time I got there that morning, she had already been gone. My dad said, oh, your mom went for a walk. And he was kind of delusional, which, which you know, is pretty common. He was kind of delusional as far as her condition and the things that she would do and wouldn't do. Um, he gave her lots of excuses. And so uh, he told me, oh, yeah, your mama went for a walk and made, you know, he's very, very cavalier about it. I'm like, what? 
What do you mean from went for a walk? Oh yeah, she's done that before and come back, you know. And so I'm like, oh my gosh. So I take off looking for her. I'm all on the playground looking in the slides and you know, because it was kind of cold and windy that day, and I'm thinking maybe she got cold and climbed into the slide or and we had some other friends of ours looking for her. Um, I called my husband and he came looking for her. We couldn't find her anywhere. I mean, anywhere. And then finally, I just called the police, you know, because I'm like, okay, at this point, we had the, the gardeners, <laughs> you know, on the walkie-talkies. Anybody seen a tall black woman, you know, <laughs> walking through the complex? Nobody had seen her. So, um, once I called the police, they had already, someone had already found her. A lady saw her walking along the horse trail on the street with four purses. And that kind of, you know, stood out to her. So she then called or flagged down the police. She didn't call the police. She flagged down the police. The police officer came over, saw my mom with um, the purses and asked her, did she know her address? She did happen to know her address and she gave it to them, but it was the address at the house that they used to live in, wasn't her current address. So then they ended up having a call. They were gonna send a car to the house to check that out. But I, when I called the police, um, she had given them her name. And when I called the police, I gave them her name and then they were able to bring her to her current address in the back of a police car. And I'm like, oh my God, if my mom knew she was in the back of a police car. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 yeah, she did. Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, terrible. But at that point, um, we put locks on the gates. We disconnected the garage remote, not the remote, the the remote on the wall. We disconnected that. Um, and we had to kind of make her a prisoner in the house, just kind of lock her in, which another characteristic of Alzheimer's patients is they like to walk. And so that was just never good. So we would take her for walks and take her for walks just to try to like expend some energy. But yeah, it just... It wasn't enough because if she got it in her mind that she wanted to walk, she was going for a walk. So we had to get the the lock. And my breaking point was that if she ever jumped over a fence or the gate, you know, it was facility time because she was going to hurt herself. And although my brothers and I and my and our kids we all took shifts with them. We did the best we could, but we were not we're not healthcare professionals. So um for us, it was the best thing to do was to put her in a facility where she would be engaged. And my dad wanted that for her, that someone would know how to um stimulate her in the state that she was in. That that was what he wanted. So um we found the facility and they moved in and um, my dad was able to move in with her just because he was her husband. Um, but it, it, he ended up needing the care as well. Uh, and, and that all that made all the difference in in her situation, because, like I said, they stimulated her. They knew how to meet her where she was, whereas we did not we were kind of being counterproductive trying to hold her in one position. And man, I mean, she's flourishing now. You know what I mean? She's still, yes, she has Alzheimer's. Yes, you know, it's it sucks. It's terrible. But in the facility that she's in now, they do puzzles, they dance, they, um, they sing, they you know, they address her, Miss Gloria, Miss Gloria, you know, she still gets to be sassy and she does their hair. And I mean, it's the perfect situation for her. Whereas when we were doing it, it was like, oh God, you know, what are we doing this right? Are we doing this wrong? Or, you know, it just, and my dad was not happy. He was not happy 
not that he was unhappy with us, but he just wanted, he knew that there, somebody could stimulate her better than we were. If that makes sense. Um, and even that he knew more than he knew how, you know? Um, so at this point where we are with, with her Alzheimer's diagnosis is she knows all of us still. And, you know, each of my brothers, we have had these conversations as, oh God, what is it going to be like when mom doesn't remember us? Because it's a degenerative disease. You know, it just gets worse and worse and worse and she forgets more and more and more. Now she is taking the medication, but in taking the medication, it doesn't reverse anything. It just slows it down, you know, it keeps it from progressing as fast. But because she wouldn't take it for so long, she just got more and more far gone. You know, I've learned that it is hereditary, which is, listen, what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to give my kids full control to make those decisions for me to keep me from. I don't think I, I don't even think in, if I was in that state that I would say no to the medication. <laughs> I just don't want to be able to say no. You know, I want to take it as early as possible. I call it MC, uh, mild cognitive something, but um, you know, you can get it early. You can get it early and it's just kind of falls under for aging forgetfulness, you know? And so I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to definitely probably around 55, 57, somewhere in there, I'm going to start complaining about my memory, even if it ain't happening yet. So they can start slipping me some medicine, you know? Hmm. I'm, I'm being lighthearted about this, but I really do know that, you know, I'm really ple pleading the blood of Jesus over this thing. They say it's hereditary and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I say it ran in my family. It ran in my family. It stops. It's going to stop. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I believe God can do that. He's big. And he's bigger than Alzheimer's. He's bigger than dementia. He's bigger than cancer. He's bigger than than anything that that we, you know, tells us that we have to succumb to it. We don't. We don't. That life happens to us all. You know, nobody wants any of this stuff. We all want to live a nice, long, productive life. And that's possible for most of us, but there are certain things that happen in life that we have to, that we just have to walk out. And during the process of it, we got to trust God. I mean, there's no way around it. If you guys have any questions or comments or even some advice, I'll even take advice at this point. My mom is set up where she is and, um, I'm glad that they treat her good, <laughs> you know, because they might say she might show up if they don't. <laughs> I'm just saying, Christmas Gloria Jean might show up. But if there are any questions that you have, be loved, any comments that you want to make, or any pieces of advice like or wisdom concerning the situation that you want to share with me or with any others, please down. comment down below. If you like this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. Hey, and follow me on Instagram. It's Nadra.Williams on Instagram. I am so glad that you guys chose to stop by and chat with me for a little while. Okay, this video isn't too long. Yay! I was trying to condense it, you know, but... Yay. All right, love y'all.